Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Woodbury, agriculture education teacher and FFA advisor at Partial High School in Partial North Dakota. We're out here at the community corn plot and I'm going to show you today how to harvest and shuck corn. So this plot is planted by a local company, United Agronomy, and this is one of the sections of the corn. We are right behind the United Agronomy shop which is right next to the Senex, which you maybe can't see here, but it's the, the Senex on Highway 37. And over here, you can see there is another section of corn also planted by United Agronomy. And then over there is a section of potatoes planted by John Woodbury, who just happens to be my husband. So let's get to it. First of all, when you plant corn, you want to plant it in a block. Corn is wind pollinated, so each of these tassels, this is the male part, the pollen from that has to fall way down here onto the silks, which is the female part. And so the wind moves that around. So oftentimes you'll see corn plots where the outer sections of corn are maybe not real good. They're small or not well formed, and that can, can be in part because of that wind pollination factor. So this is obviously a large patch of corn and most of the corn cobs are going to be very well filled. What we're looking for when we go to harvest is a cob of corn where the silks are dried up. You can see how kind of dry and brown and almost crispy these are. And this one, even though it's dry, it's not gonna be filled real full. And I can tell that from experience and kind of feeling it. I'm gonna take this one off and show you what it looks like inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this ear of corn and I'm gonna twist down and around like that. Okay, and then to husk it, I'm gonna kind of grab and make two sections right there and just rip open. And this corn is ready or close to ready. This one could go another three, four days maybe. But as you can see, it's not filled very well. Each of these little bumps right here could be a, a kernel. The silks, each silk is attached to a single kernel of corn. And so everywhere where pollen didn't land on a silk, it didn't grow down here and fertilize that kernel. So what I would do with this, if I was gonna cook it, is I would just keep, keep pulling until that's all off. And then take the silks off, and there you have a kern or a cob of not really, I mean, it's good corn, but it's not well filled. Let's go see if we can find a better one. I'm gonna go a little deeper down into the patch here. Take your bucket or bag or whatever with you. Here's another one. This looks like it'll probably be better. I can feel more fullness in here. If you're brand new to harvesting corn, one way to do it is to harvest one and take a chance that it is not full. Another way to do it is if you kind of peel back these layers, it, if you do that on just a couple of them, it won't hurt that cob overly much. If you just kind of peel it open and take a look at it. And you can see, move that out of the way, you can see that that's got nice plump kernels. Once you get used to it, you can kind of tell by feeling it. Let's open this one up and take a look at it. Look at that. Nice and full. The, the tip didn't fill completely. Um, I think that's a part of the genetics of the corn and that has to do with moisture. But every one of the kernels that you know that was pollinated you can see that virtually every single one of them was pollinated and filled very well this particular cob of corn is ready to eat i'm gonna this is called bicolor so it's two different uh, it's yellow corn and white corn in the same cob see that see how it kind of splooshes at me and it's it's milky inside that's called the milk stage if you can see that and that is what you want for fresh eating corn just get rid of those husks. This 
corn plot is available to the community. You can come out here whenever it is handy and pick corn, take it home with you, uh, give it to your family, those kinds of things. Before we leave, I want to show you a cob of corn that is probably overly ripe. And that's going to be this one here. It, it may have been okay, but somehow it got damaged and it was broken off. So this cob is probably not going to be your best fresh eating corn because it's been hanging around in the heat for probably three or four days and it's kind of dried up. This is not going to be probably your best eating corn. And then ones that are didn't really fill at all is one like this right here. There is nothing inside here. I wouldn't even bother picking this. This one here actually though, I'm, I'm going to pick this one. Yep, look how, oh wow, nice corn cob, really nice. But look how dark it has become and some of the kernels are getting that, this is called a dent, it's starting to dent. And that means that it's drying up. The sugars are turning to starches. I'm gonna take this one anyway. I'm gonna take it home and I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna leave the husks on and I'm gonna hang it up and I'm gonna let it dehydrate just naturally in the air. As long as they're not laying somewhere or you know clustered together or whatever, if you just hang this up to dry, then when it's dry, then you can shell it out. This makes really good corn and bean soup. So if you have some corn that's a little overly done, consider hanging it up to dry and use it for corn and bean soup. You can store a whole bunch of it in a bag or in a jar and use it throughout the winter with no worries about it going bad. So again, we've got the community corn plot and on the other side is the community potato plot. I hope that you will come out and enjoy the fruits of the labor of the local businesses. Bye.